Corita wisely lets us know that creativity and celebration go hand in hand, that it's meant to inspire and empower you to take your creative process and spring it into action. So it was at this time that I was finding myself pretty creatively depleted and something miraculous happened. I had two friends introduce me to this experience they were creating and it was a salon performance series and salons have been around for a long time and an amazing part of human culture but this particular salon performance series was beginning to take form uh, in a bar in a bar in Chicago where we would meet every Monday and provide a, a community and a space and a location for people to come and share and we would theme each Monday to give some structure and together this this creative world began to evolve. So for me, this ties into Karita's teachings that celebration is based on ritual and pattern of action. We would show up every Monday and there would be a loose series of expectations, but under those expectations, a playground in which you can come and explore and discover and create for yourself with really no limitations and no boundaries. And suddenly this creative well that I felt was so depleted began to fill up. And, and not only was I considering myself an actor, I would come into this space and I would begin writing and I would begin dancing and, and, and you know, reciting Meryl Streep monologues or, or making hand puppets and, you know, <laughs> Suddenly I'm a puppeteer. What I'm saying is I watch so many of us come and take this ritual, make it our own, and fuel a fire that became contagious. And so my question is, what other ways can be celebrated? What other moments of containment can you make a ritual to fuel any sort of creative expression for yourself or for your community? So now that I've talked a little bit about Salonathon, I thought I would give a more thorough example about one of the themes that I think really helps encapsulate Karita's teaching and might provide you a little bit of fun and enjoyment to think about how celebration can enter your creative practice. Uh, I cooked it up early on in, in my involvement in the Salon series and I called it the apprenticeship. And that was a night where artists would ask other artists they admire to have them teach them their art. So. A painter would ask a musician to teach them a song. Uh, we had a chef learn how to cut hair. The possibilities were endless. And I asked one of my favorite choreographers and favorite dancers in Chicago to teach me how to dance. And am I a dancer? No, but it cracked open my creative ability to think outside of myself. And the room comes alive just because the spirit of sharing is so integral to all of us and makes us all feel good. Salonathon ran every Monday in Chicago for almost seven years. And we laid it to rest about two years ago, knowing that eventually, possibly, the ritual would be needed again. And as we all deal with this COVID crisis, our wheels started turning. And I'm happy to report that Salonathon is now an online platform for people to still come and share in the spirit of which we did for those many years in Chicago. So I think that means that celebration and creativity can officially happen anywhere. So I have a homework assignment for you. What ways can you create rituals or pattern of action in your community to make creativity happen. Can you create a poetry circle in your living room with your roommates or family? Can you get online and offer a storytelling session? Can you simply put something out into the world for the creative joy and expression within yourself? The possibilities are actually endless and I can't wait to see what celebration and creativity bring to you. So thank you for your creative practice. I can't wait to celebrate it. Be well.